I brought 10 Nintendo Switches from eBay for £420 and today I'm going to try and fix them. These Nintendo Switches were all sold by one seller as faulty and I managed to get these for the bargain price of £420 which is around about $480 US dollars. They've all got various things wrong with them but I'm hopefully going to fix these and hopefully make some money. Let's get these on the workbench and see what we can do. But if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content, I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications. That way you don't miss any future videos. And you can also check me out over on Twitch where I stream regularly. Just go to twitch.tv forward slash the 2015 link in the video description. Check me out, give me a follow and catch a live stream. But without further ado, let's get into this repair. Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. As the industry leader in custom PCB manufacturing, PCBWay is the only solution you'll ever need for all your engineering projects. With affordable custom PCBs, flexible PCBs, CNC and 3D printing, you can get your project off the ground today. With the PCBWay store, you can purchase development boards, tools and everything you'll need to get started. Prices are competitive and the possibilities are endless. From multimeters to microchips, PCBWay have it all. And if you're struggling for inspiration, you can find pre-made projects by like-minded engineers. To learn more about the PCBWay store, shared projects, or any of PCBWay services, head to the video description where you'll find links to the great products and services that PCBWay offer. Now let's get back to the repair. So like I said in the intro, we've got 10 Nintendo Switches here. This is a video that I'm really looking forward to. I hope I can get them all in one video. But I think the first thing that I'm going to do with these is just hook them all up to my USB and meter. And we'll see what kind of current is being drawn from them and try and get a general idea of what's going on. So let's start off with the switch lights. This says no power, pulls 0.445 amps at 15 volts. Let's just check and make sure that's true. And okay, on my ammeter, we've got 15 volts or thereabouts at 0.19 amps. And now 0.48 amps. However, nothing seems to be happening on the screen. So that one seems around about correct. The current that's being drawn and the voltage can vary depending on the power supply. This isn't an official Nintendo Switch power supply. So we're going to give a little bit of a different reading to what the person who sold them would have got on another power supply. So that one seems correct. Let's check the next one. This one says, no image can hear system sounds. Okay. And that one's not drawing any current for some reason. Let's try the other way. Ah, there we go. Uh, no, that one seems incorrect. It could be that the battery has been unplugged from this. So let's drop something down. A big thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. It does help me to pay for these things. So 15 volts, 0 0.08 amps, no power. I'll fast forward through these and I'll get an initial reading and see if I can figure out what's going on with them. And then we'll pick it up at the end. So we've got 0.48 amps at 15 volts. What does the back say? It says 0.38 amps at 15 volts, so yeah, about right. No image can hear system sounds. And again, we get the same. Blue screen of death, parental controls on, V1 unpatched. Oh, possibly unpatched, okay. Sometimes works, all right. Ah, yeah, so we've got blue screen of death there. This one's just got a marking on the screen that says BSOD for blue screen of death. Yep, okay. This one's really not in good condition at all. It's definitely going to need at least a new touch screen. And uh, nothing at all happening. No power and um, 5 volts only. I'm not getting anything on the screen at all. No life. Okay. All right. No power, 0.44 amps at 15 volts. Yep, that's about right. And again, this one says no power, 0.44 amps at 15 volts. Looks like the battery's really dead on this one. It's drawing 0.11 amps. Sometimes when the battery's really dead, it will draw a really low current and it will trickle charge until it gets to a point where it's safe to charge the battery fast. And let's work, first of all, on this blue screen of death. So I think we need to get this apart so we can figure out what's going on with it. 
The blue screen of death is normally caused by a connection issue on the CPU. So we'll open it up, we'll see what's going on with it and hopefully get this fixed. Hello, so the board is pretty much ready to come out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can figure out what the actual cause of this blue screen is. So as I said, the blue screen is caused by a communication issue on the CPU and RAM. And basically what that means is that the CPU can't communicate with the RAM, so it just throws out a blue screen. So sometimes it's the RAM, but sometimes it's the CPU. Most often it's the CPU and it's caused by warping on the board. And that's caused because these are really, really cheaply made. They're really flimsy. They're not good at all. And what happens is this bends like a banana and it causes a connection issue either with the RAM, which is located here, or it causes a connection issue with the CPU, which is located here. So one way we can test and see if we can figure out which one it actually is, is by putting some pressure on the CPU and RAM. So what I'm going to do is just take off this shield, and then once I've got all of this horrible thermal paste off here, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some pressure, I'm going to start with the RAM, I'm going to just press down on it as I start to power it up, and that might give me an indication as to what's wrong. So I'll put pressure on this top RAM first, Try and turn it on. Yep. So put pressure on that top RAM and straight away that attempted to boot up. And there you go. That's turning on. <laughs> All right. So it looks like we need to reball this RAM chip here in order to get this working. And I'm not actually going to use this housing because it is bent and also it's not in great condition. I can potentially reuse that digitizer if I need to, and the LCD appears good. So we've got some usable parts in there, but I do have some brand new housings, which I built in preparation for this video. There's a beautiful looking red housing there with a brand new digitizer, brand new screen, uh, almost new Joy-Cons, but they're in really, or rather Joy-Con rails, but they're in really good condition. A fully working battery, working fan, working speakers, you get the drift. This is a very, very nice looking shell and it's going to increase the value of the console and make it a bit easier to sell as well. So under the microscope then, here we have the RAM. So this is the top RAM IC which I've just put a little bit of pressure on. I'm going to remove this. So I'm going to desolder this from the board using hot air and a little bit of flux. Flux is going to help solder to flow and prevent any kind of damage to the board through oxidation or torn pads. So I'm going to set my hot air up at 440 degrees Celsius at 40% airflow. That's using my Atten ST862D. Not sponsored, but a very good hot air station. Right, there's the RAM removed. And before I go any further, I just need to prep this board, add some more flux there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my soldering iron to replace the solder that's on here right now with some leaded solder. That's going to lower the melting temperature down so it's safe to clean the solder off with wick. So if we've got some nice flat solder pads ready for the RAM chip to go back on when I re -ball it. And it looks like that top corner is a non-connected pad. I'm not seeing any via. So a via is basically a pathway to another part of a circuit. Same with that one there, not seeing any via, so I don't think that's going to be any kind of issue. So non-connected pads always seem to lift up very easily. Well, I just lost another one. That one might actually be connected. I felt that rip as well, that was completely my fault. No, I'm not seeing a via. So it's time to fix up this RAM chip. So again, I'm going to add some leaded solder to this, and then I'm going to wick it away.
All right, let's just pop this in some IPA, clean it up. Okay, there we go. That is ready for reboiling. So I don't have the correct stencil for this particular chip. It's got 200 solder balls. It's going to take me about, around about 10 minutes, but I'm going to do it by hand. Basically, what I need to do is I need to pop some solder balls onto here and I need to place them all onto each pad by hand. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it, then I'm going to skip the rest because it's going to take too long for the video otherwise. I'm going to add some flux. Not too much flux. Just enough flux. Nice even layer. Then I'm going to drop some 0.45mm solder balls on the chip. And then I'm going to place them one by one onto each pad. So I'm going to skip through the rest of this, I don't want it to take too long, but basically this is all I'm going to do. See you on the other side. Two hundred solder balls later. Two hundred balls later, and we've got a nice reballed chip. It's going to be that way. So the indicator's here, and we need to match that up with this dot just here. So we're going to get that roughly in line. But one way you can get it to line up is if you get it roughly in place. These are really small chips, but if you press down on the chip and then give it a wiggle, if it's in place then it won't move. So I'm going to set my hot air at 420 degrees Celsius at 20% airflow. I've got no nozzle on the hot air. I'm just going to flow it nice and slowly. Okay, I'll move the heat away for a second. Let's just add some flux. So I'm going to let that trickle underneath there and then increase to 440 degrees Celsius at 40% airflow. Let's give the chip a tap. There we go. Perfect. All right, I'm going to give that a second to cool down and then I'm going to add some isopropyl alcohol and just give it a clean. Don't want to put the isopropyl alcohol on too quickly because we don't want to damage the board. I'm going to give it a scrub. Just dry off the board. It doesn't matter, the isopropyl alcohol isn't going to hurt the board. It's non conductive, but that's all good. It's nice and clean. So let's get the board back in and see if it boots. Okay, moment of truth. What do you think? Is it going to work? I hope so. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Parental controls is on, but if I phone Nintendo, I'll be able to get parental controls turned off, and then I'll be able to factory reset this one and resell it. Okay, it looks like it might need a replacement Joy-Con rail there. Let's just try cleaning it. Okay, it does look like it needs a replacement rail. It's not connecting to that Joy-Con. It is reading a game, and it's not connecting that Joy-Con. That's a bit... Oh, yeah, it... there you go. It read that one. Okay, it does connect one. It looks like we need a new rail, but I am going to change the housing on this. And even though I don't think it is going to be, I've been wrong before. I'm going to pop this onto the computer and just see if we're able to exploit it. So the way I'm going to do that, rather than using a jig, is just by disconnecting the NAND and then attempt to power it on. It's not going to show anything on the screen. And as you can see, it says RCM device detected. 
your five press inject payload, what do you know? It takes a payload, which means this is exploitable. So by unpatched, that means that it can install some custom firmware. But like I said, I'm gonna pop this into a Mario limited edition housing. Or rather, it's kind of a Mario limited edition. It's unofficial, but it is the same colors as Mario limited edition. And I also have the matching Joy-Cons for it as well. So that'll be a little bit easier to sell. And there we go, inside a new case. So this case is the kind of Mario limited edition, but it looks a lot better. And this one is kind of bent. So yeah, really not happy with that one. So that's why I've chose to put it into the other case. So let's just test a few things. There we go. Now the left Joy-Con's pairing. And the right one as well. Awesome. Fantastic. So this is an exploitable switch, which means that I can sell it for a little bit more than what I would be able to sell it for if it wasn't exploitable. Probably get around about 20 or 30 pound more. So I am super, super happy with that. That's how it's going to be sold. I do need to put a back case on it. So I've got a back cover there. Needs a bit of a clean, it's got some thermal paste on it. Uh, a few other things I need to do to it, put some thermal paste on it, put the heat sink on it, etc, etc. But I'll do that off camera. But that's what it's gonna look like with obviously the kickstand and the game card cover as well, the dust cover. But yeah, I'm really, really happy with that. And that is number one, done. So on to number two then. No power, 0.44 amps at 15 volts. Let's get this one apart and we'll work on this one. I'm just putting that other one on charge because I need to charge the battery. It is fast charging. So just off to the corner there, we are getting 0.98 amps and that's where all the screen's off. So it is fast charging, that's fantastic. I know I haven't put all the screws in the other one as well, but that's absolutely fine. All right, one thing I've just noticed is I am seeing a little bit of liquid damage just here on the housing so that could be why we're not getting any kind of power on this so let's get the board out and we'll fully inspect it under the microscope and okay here we go now i'm seeing why we're getting no power on this one so immediately on the back of the board i can see that we've got some corrosion around here this is the max 77620 it's one of the main power management chips and we've got corrosion there. We've got some corrosion on this transistor here. And around the backlight I see as well. Yeah, so there's quite a bit of damage to this one. Okay, let's start off then by cleaning this up using some isopropyl alcohol and a toothbrush. I'm not sure what that is. Looks like something out of a horror movie. So I'll give that a second just to soak in. Already that looks a million times better, right? All right, let's just dry that off. There we go. Okay, and as we can see, we've got some very burnt components, including this inductor here. That's going to need replacing. I'm probably going to reflow this, this Max 77620. But we've also got some damaged components here. I'm going to give these pads here, these ones that are burnt, a little bit of a scrape. And then I'm probably going to give this chip a reflow as well. So I guess I should just start pulling some components off then. I'll start by adding some flux. I've got my hot air at 440, 40% airflow, degrees Celsius that is. And by reflowing this chip, it's just going to basically get rid of any corrosion under the chip. Let's have a quick look at these pads. So I've just scraped those away using my tweezers, just to get rid of the little bit of charring. We may have a burnt pad here. 
And yep, that track is broken. So we're going to need a jumper wire from here to here before we put that component back. Okay, so basically a jumper wire means I'm going to put a little wire which is going to link the pad from where it's broken to where it's meant to go to. And that will restore the connection and allow me to basically, well, hopefully fix the power issue. So let's just add some flux. And I'm going to add some leaded solder. And then I'll grab some enameled solder wire. And I just realised I didn't actually tin that pad that I wanted to tin. And then I'll need to tin this wire as well. And now I'll just need to restore this trace. So basically I'm just going to position this so that it's not in the way of anything. But also at a point where I can drop a capacitor there. Doesn't look great, I know. But I don't want it shorting out on this pad here. I'll just trim that there and trim it there as well. There we go. Looking good. I'm going to use some conformal coating just to protect the area. And that's nice and secure now. All right, time to grab a few donor components and get this thing fixed, hopefully. All right, I think that's about the best I can get it. I'm not so sure on this one, to be honest. All right, it's the moment of truth. Is it gonna work? Ah, oh, no, it's not going to work. I think, I think this one's going to be unfixable. Ah, oh, damn it. Let's just try another battery in this. So I know this battery's got some charge in it. No, it's not going to work. Ah, oh, so it's looking like number two is going to be unfixable. That is a shame. Wah, wah, wah. Unless the screen's faulty. Let's try it in another housing. I know this housing is a good test housing. Sorry, this one. So let's just double check on another housing just to make sure it's not the screen. So I'll just plug the screen and backlight in for this and the battery. I won't worry about anything else for now. Uh, no, unfortunately not. It's reading 0.25 amps at... 15 volts so that's telling me that it's charging a battery I'm going to see if it does increase and charge a battery but I don't think this is going to work I am feeling a little bit of heat out of the battery management circuit so I think it is charging a battery it's just not working at all which is rather unfortunate this one may need a revisit in a separate video that sucks. So I think for now, number two is going to be unfixable. So switch number three says no life at 5 volts, 0.09 amps, only pulls power something away. Yeah, only pulls power away. Okay. This one's interesting. Uh, and yeah, okay. So he says no charger detected for me. And that's on both sides of the port. Okay. Let's take apart number three. Let's just see. First of all, let's unplug that. And let's pop under the microscope because there's a fuse that I want to test and just see if that's any good. And also some areas around here as well. 
So the fuse I was talking about is just here and that is the main fuse for power coming into the board. So let's just check for that. I'm going to be looking for continuity. Okay, so that beeps, which means that it's good. Let's check this area here, starting with this coil. That's good. Sometimes this can go bad and it can cause no power. Next, let's just check some of these capacitors for a short to ground. Something on there, I'm not, not sure what that is. That beep is because this side of the cap is ground. That seems good. Let's have a look around M92 T36. And it doesn't appear short. Oh, there's a short right there. And that could be causing no power. So let's get the board out and we'll see what we can do about getting this one working. Starting to build up some screws there. Uh, with the board out, let's pop everything else to one side. I think it's this cap here which is linked to P13 USB. I think this one is just for M92 T36. So let's get that chip removed and we'll see if that short goes away. Very unlikely going to be the capacitor. One way I like to remove ICs is just to use what I call the drop method, which is where I just hold the entire board by the chip, heat it up, and then when it's ready, it's just going to drop on its own. In about three, two, one. There we go. So with that chip removed, let's just test again. I can use this part here for ground now. And yep, that short has disappeared. Excellent. So that means that chip was bad. And um, replacing that chip should fix this issue. So that chip there is the main USB-C charging IC. And it's a very common failure on these consoles. So I'll just partially solder a new chip down. And then if I add some flux, And there we go, that is beautiful. Just add some ice up with alcohol. Give it a little bit of a scrub, awesome. So let's just see now if this wants to work. So I took that M92 T36 off this board here. So I have got some new ones, but that was right next to me and I'm a lazy technician. All right, let's just pop the charger in while it's out of the case and uh, let's just see if it wants to charge so I've got my ammeter there let's just grab let's not put it on there because there's IPA there but let's just grab this pop it in there and let's see if it recognises the charger yes it does but it's only recognising it ah there we go so is that, no, I think that's just my cable. There we go. And the other side. Yep, it appears to be picking it up. Now the question is whether it's picking the battery up or not. I can't tell because it'll draw sometimes 0.08 amps when it's not detecting a battery. And then sometimes it'll draw 0.08 amps if it's completely dead as well. So... I'm going to try it with another battery, one that I know has got at least enough charge to draw 0.2 amps. And there we go. 0.36. So that is indeed picking something up. Let's just pop it back in the housing and I'll see if we get anything on the screen. All right, moment of truth. Are we going to get anything on the screen? Yeah, let's go. That's what I'm talking about. We've got a charging symbol. That's working. This switch is fixed. I'm going to let this charge. The battery's really, really dead. We're on 120 milliamps right now of current draw. The reason for the 
sudden increase is because it's now powering the screen as well. But we're on 120 milliamps, that's nowhere near enough to turn on. So I'm going to let this charge and move on to number four. Number four, again, is going to be another that says no charger detected. Let's take it apart. And under the microscope we go. All right, so same deal as before on this one. I'm going to go ahead and test this fuse first of all. The fuse is good. And then I'm going to check this coil. The coil is good. And then let's just check for shorts around here. Let's get rid of that thermal pad. No shorts. Okay. Let's check for shorts around here. And we have a short there on that cap. So this is short on both sides of the cap, which means that there's a short on this chip. Okay. So once again, let's change M92 T36. Let's give it a try. Let's just see if it recognises the charger. Yeah, it does. That's what I'm talking about. How about the other side? Oh, yeah. I just want to check this screen. Well, that's assuming that the actual board is working. But I want to check the screen and see if the screen is cracked because if the screen's not cracked, then I can use the screen or I can just put a new digitizer on this one. So I'm literally just going to check it with the backlight and LCD. Let's have a look. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Has that just blown the chip again? Uh-oh. Could that be the screen that's blowing that chip? Oh, wow, it's just blowing it there now. Okay. I'm not seeing any damage on that port. Wow. It's just blown my chip. Well, that's not cool, is it? I guess I'll change it again. Which sucks. But I guess I'll change it again and then try it with a different screen. That's annoying. There we go. It doesn't take long to change a chip. Not when you're used to it anyway. Alright, so here's another red case that I made earlier. Let's try it with this case. I hope it was a screen. I hope I don't have to change another chip. And uh, here we go. Time for the moment of truth. Is it going to blow yet another one? We get 15 volts. Do we get something on the screen? No. I'm not seeing anything on the backlight. It is charging. Or it appears to be charging. I'm going to try it in the computer. Something on the CPU doesn't sound good. I'm hearing kind of like a, a clicking, but that don't sound great. Something isn't good on that. Something's not happy. I think I need to leave it to charge the battery. If it's going to charge the battery, that is. It's definitely not happy unless my screen that's inside this housing doesn't work. I can't see that being the case. But at the moment, nothing's displaying on the screen. It's not recognising in RCM mode. And when I do plug it into the computer, I can hear like a ticking noise coming from the CPU. So let's just pop it into another housing again. Just plug it into a charger. No. No, it's not picking up anything, and in fact, it's not drawing any current either, and it's killing chips. Yeah, that clicking noise, every time I've experienced that clicking noise, it's never ended well. So, honestly, I don't know on this one. I think this one's going to be a no-fix, to be honest. Two out of four. 
on to number five. We're almost at the halfway point. Alright, so number five is no power, 0.44 amps at 15 volts, and it's a V2. Okay, so let's see if we can get this one working. Hopefully, we get at least three or five working. And before we do that, I've just realised that this is now turning on. Except we don't have a touchscreen connected. That's rather silly. So I've just prompted that to boot. Um, parental controls is on. So I'm going to have to phone Nintendo to do this. So what I'll do is I'll contact Nintendo. I'll tell them that I forgot the pin. Pretend it's my Switch. Well, it is my Switch. Wow, there's loads of games on here. There we go. Boom. Okay, so it's connecting Joy-Cons. It seems to be working. Let's get my test game out. Um, pop it in there. Boom. That works. Excellent. Fantastic. So that all appears to be working. So we've definitely got two of four working, which is great news. All right, we've got some screws missing in this one as well, but that's fine. We are gathering up quite the collection of screws. And already I can see water damage on this. So the board is definitely going to have to come out. It looks like it might need a new battery as well. This one might have quite the bit of water damage. Okay, that one I think has actually been out before. That foam come off a little bit too easy. Again, that's okay. I mean, it doesn't appear as though any work's been done to this. If it had, then the liquid damage probably wouldn't be visible. And unfortunately, this housing might not be any good because I can see liquid damage on the LCD connector and also on the backlight ribbon and connector as well. So this might need a new screen. That's going to be okay. For now, we just want to get this board working. So let's pop this under the scope and take a look. So starting down here, we've got some liquid damage around the Joy-Con connector and the battery connector. So that's going to need a clean up. May need to do something about this, but we've also got quite a bit of damage around BQ24193. That's the battery management area. And considerable damage around here. Yeah, that's going to need some rebuilding. Uh, um, that's not good. Uh-oh. Wow. Oh, dear. Okay, this is probably the worst liquid damage I've seen in quite some time. I'm going to be honest. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, no. Ooh, it's rough. Let's start off just by cleaning up a few areas a few key areas okay so basically that's going to be power management areas battery management uh cpu power all of that stuff Let's take a closer look then using the multimeter. So let's start off with this area here. And how that's not going any short, I will never know. Um, wow, I'm not finding any shorts. I mean, obviously, most of this is still going to need replacing. However, it's cleaned up fairly well. Some of these BGA chips might just need a little bit of a reflow, to be honest. Let's have a look on another screen, not this one, because I can see corrosion on the LCD, and I can also see corrosion on the LCD backlight connector as well. So I'll look into the screen later. I'm not really bothered about the screen at the minute. Let's just use another screen, and let's just see if we get any activity. What do you reckon? Is it going to work? I don't think it will. And it might help if I plugged in a battery. That might be a bit of a help. Wow. Well, I will be damned. 
That's unbelievable. <laughs> that is absolutely unbelievable. I am gobsmacked. <laughs> okay, well, that's at least trying to charge the battery. And it's displaying as well. So it's got a display. It's, it's attempting to charge the battery. So I think... In fact, I don't think we've got to replace any ICs here. I think we just need to replace some damaged capacitors. Wow, I'm shocked. I don't think I've ever, se ever seen anything like it. This one's definitely a fighter. So I'm going to replace some caps. I'm going to pull some parts from donor boards. Replace some caps and resistors. The stuff what looks burnt, I think I'll just replace. So, cue inspirational music, I guess. That was a lot of work. What do you reckon? Is it going to work? I don't know. Could I? If possible, I could have made it worse, but couldn't leave it like that. So yeah, let's give this a test. That was way too much work. All right, let's test it in this red case. There we go. Boom. That's charging. It's only charging at 100 milliamps right now but this battery is completely dead. But the switch itself is charging and this one appears to be fixed. So I've been filming for over four hours now, around about four and a half hours, unfortunately. And that is all I'm gonna be able to fit into one video. It's gonna be very difficult to even fit this into one video. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this part one. We've managed to fix what appears to be three Nintendo Switches out of the first five, which is absolutely fantastic, 60% success rate. That means these three Switches alone should pay most of my money back if they're all working absolutely fine. There's still a few tests I'm going to need to do off camera, but that's going to take too long you know, to do on the video. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to call this part one, and in part two, which I'll release a few days after this one, I will look at the other ones. So there's four Nintendo Switch Lights, and then there's one Nintendo Switch Normal, which is another blue screen of death. There's a reason that I left this one, and that's because I know it's going to be a time-consuming job, because it's a blue screen of death. So, five more to look at. Three of them appear to be fixed. I'm going to leave this one to charge. And I'll obviously, you know, let people know how that one got on in the next video. Hopefully, by the next video, I'll have the three that are working put back together. And they will be pretty much ready to sell. But three out of five ain't bad. And uh, I'm really, really happy so far. We've still got four switch lights. One other switch to do. Hopefully, we get at least three of them with the five working. Fingers crossed. So... If you're not subscribed, make sure you do get subscribed for part two. And make sure you give the video a thumbs up as well. Tell all your friends, tell all your family. Might must make me really, really popular. And uh, yeah, I really do appreciate it. If you do want to support me, you can head over to Twitch. 
You can link an Amazon Prime account to Twitch and become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking your Amazon Prime account to Twitch Gaming and then pressing subscribe for free with Prime. It doesn't cost you anything if you've already got Amazon Prime and it really does really help me out. So, really does really help me out. I'm tired, it's late and uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, 3 out of 5 ain't bad. Stay tuned for part 2. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think down in the comments down below and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.